We've aired this story in the past, but with Memorial Day just ahead, we thought we'd bring back this feature about a place that's been called the most patriotic coffee shop in the country. Look for the Star Spangled Banner waving over Main Street and you have arrived at the Saturday morning go-to place for every veteran within driving distance. Starting at 9 a.m., the volunteer band is tuning up for a friendly jam session. And the volunteer baristas have the coffee flowing. Now that pot holds 100 gallons, and I'll probably empty it before the day's over. The coffee here is much better than military issue, but this gathering place has become known among vets for much more than the hot drinks. The coffee shop and the people that I met and everything uh, changed my life. And to this day, I give every day, I'm here every, every day I can get here. And the coffee shop to me uh, represents a place of healing. Well, you, you get to talk to people that know what your feelings are and what's going on. I heard one guy had gone over to the VA in Salisbury and somebody over there told him to come over here. He was having a hard time dealing with you know life in general. And uh, he said the best thing they told him was to come over and get a cup of coffee. This is where he got his medicine. Yeah, he come over and got his medicine here. He got some coffee. I'm 88 years old. Okay. So I've been around a while. I've never seen a place in this world that I've been that is as friendly as, as there is in Morrisville. I swear, this is absolutely outstanding. The coffee shop came into existence thanks to Richard Warren, a veteran himself who passed away before he ever got to see the final fruits of his labor. He created the nonprofit organization Welcome Home Vets Incorporated. It goes hand in hand with the coffee shop. This military museum at the entrance to the coffee lounge is loaded with donated materials from many of Richard's friends, acquaintances, and from others around the community. Lynn King recently volunteered his time to help design and build the exhibition room. But that's not important. The most important thing were the volunteers. I had about eight to 12 men every day for seven weeks, and we did this place over. The exhibits cover everything from the Revolutionary War to the World Wars and every era leading up to the present day. There is no charge for admission, but any extra dollars from coffee sales or donations goes into helping veterans and even others in any way possible. This is for the community. We cater specifically to the veterans within the community, but Everyone is welcome because there are people walking around in mainstream society that have demons and we will welcome them here and help them in any way we can. There are some fascinating people here. Within this room, I met no fewer than five World War II veterans. Rod McFarquhar survived the Normandy invasion, only to run into a German decapitating wire a few days later in Belgium. He survived it, but spent the rest of the war recuperating. And on the day of this interview, Len McCutcheon was celebrating the 72nd anniversary of his first day in the infantry. But the best stories might be the friendly ribbing they give to one another. We had a joke came through the other day about uh, giving the following order, secure the building, what would happen? The Navy would lock it and turn out the lights. The Army would establish a perimeter and kill anyone who came inside. The Marines would blow it to smithereens and clear it out and leave it a hole. The Air Force, on the other hand, would rent it for six months and take with an option to buy. So this is the way we, we go at it. You get coffee, culture, and as much or as little conversation as you want on Saturday mornings at Richard's Coffee Shop in Mooresville. I'm Rick Sullivan for North Carolina Weekend. Richard's Coffee Shop and the Living Military Museum is at 1605 North Main Street in Mooresville. It's open Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Remember, vets get free coffee on Thursdays and there's bluegrass on Saturdays. For more information, give them a call at 704-663-0488 or go online to welcomehomeveteran.org. Well, this is a special day in the life of our church. Um, I also want to bring communion this morning. Uh, 
uh, Hamza Makin will be receiving his first communion, uh, and then for the rest of the mostly fifth graders, about three, four weeks ago, and he's not able to be present. So Hamza, congratulations for receiving his first communion day uh, during our communion part of the service. Also, it is Easter, and since it's Easter after the service, we have a special uh, Easter egg hunt for all our children. And so, uh, you know, Jeff Duff will begin 10 minutes after uh, the service concludes, uh, roughly 10.40, 10.45, somewhere in there. And so we'll gather up for donuts and coffee, all invited to uh, stay for that, and we'll have the Easter egg hunt just out the main entrance, kind of to the left. We've got some areas roped off there, and there will be... Uh, Four different colors eggs, and so let's get four eggs. Uh, please stop at that so everybody has a chance. We've got I don't know, hundreds of eggs out there, but uh, there'll be plenty for everyone, and we want uh, all children uh, to participate in that. I think we set up to age 12, and so uh, hope you have a great time with that the Easter egg hunt. Uh, our thanks to all those who uh, have contributed flowers, uh, lilies, and mums, and azaleas, and tulips, and whatever else is up here. Uh, thank you very much. Your names are on the back here in honor and memory of people and thank you for that contribution. Well, as many as you know, we've been a church of uh, many, many blessings that has happened uh, so much time. And, uh, you know, on Good Friday, as we celebrated, uh, those disciples were devastated, absolutely devastated by what happened on Good Friday that they thought Jesus was going to be their king. And uh, lo and behold, he ends up being crucified. So the good news of Easter is that um, something very, very exciting has happened. And uh, in this church, we've been able to be blessed in so many, many ways. Even just this last uh, few weeks, we've been able to give out several food baskets. And the kids have been participating in packing some of those baskets. And, uh, many elderly in our community have been visited. And uh, this morning, I want to invite uh, Susan Midnight and the family to come forward, please. And uh, her four children are here, Wyatt, Grace, Sophie, and Libby. And uh, Susan is going to be our reader this morning. And uh, her family is here. And uh, the Midbet family has uh, just been a blessing in our church. This last week I saw them over at the church, uh, come on over here, in front of the screen up here. Uh, so this past week I saw them over at the church. They were uh, cleaning the church. And uh, as many of you have, we want to thank you guys for helping out. They made it a family affair, and uh, they've been doing a great job. And uh, we also know that we've been praying, praying for uh, Susan's husband, Tom, who's in the military over in Afghanistan. And I think he's expected to come back sometime in June. And uh, you guys miss your dad? Yeah? And, uh, but uh, how long has your dad um, been over in Afghanistan? You know? <laughs> July of last summer. When is he due to come back? Okay. Well, as I mentioned, we've been able to uh, do some blessing in this congregation. We wanted to bless you with someone that might be uh, with some gifts that would be a housekeeper to help you in all the ways that you have uh, uh, helped out with us. And so, we could ask this uh, housekeeping gift to come on out. Jason. <laughs> Is something supposed to happen? <laughs> Thanks. How did the cleaning go over at the church the other day? Right? <laughs> Except for you?
stand and begin our service when they're open. Chad Bowley from Watch. Ramstein Air Force Base in Germany introduces our honorary starters for today's Ready? NASCAR Sprint Cup Series race. Hello to everyone. I wanted to thank NASCAR and the USO for bringing my family, Stephanie, Austin, and Cameron, and Gwendolyn out to this race today. I love you guys, and I wish I could be there with you, and I cannot wait to be home with you guys here in a few months. So please help me welcome home from Ramstein Air Force Base in Germany, Sergeant Chad Bowley. Their shock faces when I came walking out, especially my daughter. Just seeing her come running up is amazing. Excuse me. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm Sergeant Garcia. Uh, I'm the United States Army. I'm just here uh, to give a surprise to my beautiful daughter, Samantha. And you've been in Afghanistan and most recently in Georgia, right? Uh, yes, I was in Afghanistan two times, one time in uh, Iraq, and right now I'm back in Georgia. Very good. Yeah. Well, we thank you for your, for your service to country. Well, it's my pleasure. That's what I'm here for. And today we're graduating your daughter. And, uh, I appreciate that, and I really appreciate it to take care of my family down here. It's what we do. So thank you. God bless you. And, thank you so uh, much. I very much look forward to uh, have the principal put the diploma in your daughter's hand, and then she's going to walk down five steps, and the miracle is going to happen. You got to be there. Okay. So try not to cry. I'll uh, do I the won't. same. <laughs> All right. Thank you again, Sergeant. All right. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Pleasure. I couldn't say much. She's, she's 
really smart. She's, I'm really proud of her. Get set to enjoy. The Logan Kidd received the surprise of a lifetime. He thought he was in the library as a reward for good behavior. In reality, he's there to see his dad for the first time since Christmas. Logan's daddy. His dad, Brandon, has been away serving as a recruiter for the Marine Corps. He spent his first day back surprising his son at school and receiving a hero's welcome from every student at Beasley Elementary. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>